Alright, so welcome everyone to the first Vegan Business Network panel discussion. We have two regular events per month. The first of these are on every second Wednesday, or every second Tuesday, I should say, of each month. These events are info nights, which are a platform for anyone to get up and speak about business, veganism, or anything that's intersectional with that, the topics. Uh, whether this is about your own business activism or your own point of view, like it's completely, yeah, you can jump up and have a talk. Uh, second event we have is a social gathering on the fourth Thursday of each month. This event is purely for getting to know each other on a more personal level, and we just meet at various vegan and vegan friendly locations and just enjoy a nice time together. These events are brought to you by the Vegan Business Network in partnership with Enlightened Justice. Okay, so this year, there has been explosive growth in the mock meat industry. We've had Impossible Foods launch their product, which claims to be an exact replication of, meat, of a meat patty, and can basically fill anybody in a blind taste test. We've also witnessed Beyond Meat launch their Beyond Burger, which sold out in an hour during its debut at Health Foods in America. So, who here will be trying these products so they can get their hands on it? Can I see your experience? No one on the panel? No. <laughs> no, no. no I said, like, you should have probably picked it more carefully. <laughs> <laughs> so, can I ask? What is the fantastic I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. All right, how is that? To my left, James Asu, who runs Voiceless 365. James took a vowel, vowel sound in front of the five years. of the animal agriculture industry. He now works full-time as an activist, giving free speeches and appearances wherever and whenever he can, which is absolutely amazing. Thanks, bro. Cool. And to the left of him, we have Chrissy Cavello, who runs Vegan Fitness Model. Chrissy, mm -hmm. Chrissy, mm -hmm. Chrissy has played numerous wins and podium finishes in bikini and fitness modeling, smashing the vegan stereotypes, Tripping with the correct diet and attitude, age is not a barrier. She has opened up her vegan fitness studio in Burley, which offers a place for people to train with a vegan focus, which is the first that I know of. Is that correct? Or? I live with a plant-based um, fitness center in the world, um, but they don't, they're not, they're not as daring having the word vegan attached to their, their name. So, yeah, so, so it can be pretty scary um, because you exclude uh, probably 90% of the population. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm um, holding um, things that other places don't have. So, yeah, well, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and to the left of Chrissy, we have Billy Simmons, who co founded Pro Prime Organic Nutrition. Billy Simmons is a big success in the fitness industry and was the 2009 IMBA Mr. Universe. Mm. Prana Organic Nutrition is now the most successful organic and raw vegan protein powder I have ever seen and has been knocking other protein brands off the shelves for the most prominent spots in health food stores Australia wide. And to the left of Billy, we have Lee Chantel, who runs Viva La Vegan. <laughs> Lee Chantel has been vegan for around 20 years. Yeah, in January. In January. Yeah. We're going to have a big party. <laughs> <laughs> so that's before it was cool. <laughs> she is an author and international speaker. Yeah, they're all coming. Yeah. And her most recent book is called Vegan Athletes. Mm -hmm. So, before we begin, I would like to clarify uh, what we mean by mock meats. So, mock meats are meats that are derived from plant-based sources. So, this excludes meats that are cultured from actual animal cells, which are also commonly referred to as test tube meats. So, you know, that's an appealing name. <laughs> <laughs> so, hands up, can I get a hands up from everybody that um, promotes the consumption of mock meats. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Maybe you should say supports rather than promotes. Yeah. 
Tokyo supports them. <laughs> <laughs> Three more people. So the first question I have for our panel is, should we be promoting the consumption of mock meats? <clears throat> and promoting mock meats? Who said no? It was Chrissy and we should tell us a bit of a... I've got quite a response to that now. <laughs> <laughs> So, why is that proceeds? Um, well, I don't support or promote them, um, only because I um, started as a, a whole food, um, on a whole food play play diet, and vegan at the same time, and gluten free at the same time, and the illness and disease that I turned around in my body really was pivotal for me into awakening me to go vegan and, 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 and keep me vegan. Well, promoted me to watch videos and a lot of stuff that I realised that as an animal lover um, that uh, I had to stay this way, not until I just got healthy. So I think that inspiring and, and um, being a healthy role model, which a lot of the mock fake meats aren't healthy, um, that um, it could do the opposite, so in my view. So if we're trying, I, I believe cert there's certain areas that we could use it as a transition, but not as a state form of diet. So. And we can tell you. I want to just start with my pros or cons. How do you want to start? Well, I'd say that um, like the positive aspects are 20 years ago, um, the vegan mock meats were pretty bad, so you didn't have much of an option, there really wasn't much of a taste whatsoever. So they've come a long way and they're a lot better than they used to be and I, I never really liked meat, so I know a lot of my vegan friends who really liked meat when they were younger or things like that, so I never have wanted to replicate that or the taste or the, the texture or anything like that. So that's never been a thing for me, whereas I know it is for other people. And um, and I guess on the texture thing, a lot of people talk about that. So you, if you can get that texture right, like a lot of non-vegan people say, if you can get that right, then, then it's good. So I don't really necessarily understand the texture aspect, but I guess it's different than just eating what we normally eat all the time so it's good just to mix what we eat with different sort of textures and how we mix our food and i do think it's really inclusive so for people one of the biggest issues with vegans um is you know having support from the community and from friends and family so if you can have um mock meats that mean you get included in having barbecues or things like that, that's really important and I think it's really important to focus on community building and acceptance within the community because that's hard and a lot of people will stop being vegan because of those aspects. So that's a positive um, and you know tofurkey has been really successful in the States in particular for encouraging vegan vegetarian people to be able to have a fake turkey for Thanksgiving or even over Christmas. So those things are pretty impressive, and it's really convenient. Like it's easy for someone um, to just go to you know Coles, Woolworths, health food health food stores, and buy something from the fridge or the refrigerator. And it's good for non-vegan businesses and even vegan businesses that don't have a good range of vegan stuff to be able to just put something in the freezer and it'll last for however many months. They don't have to buy new stuff every week or every day. And they've got that on hand. If someone wants an alternative to their big burger, then they can make a vegan one. So I think those sort of things are really important. Um, but I do agree with what Chrissy said. That it's a sometimes food. I don't think it's something that we should be <laughs> encouraging people to be having that as a regular thing. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people are doing. And you know, 20 years ago, a vegan diet was really healthy. You, you know, most people lost weight when they became vegan. Nowadays, it's really easy to put on weight. There's just so many good, good things that we don't need that we're eating all the time. And that mock meat, I think, comes under that thing. And it's yeah. too convenient for people. And I definitely think um, 
um, that it's great as a transitional food. So for people, say, who, who love spaghetti bolognese, then you've got an alternative that they can have the spaghetti. So it's not as um, scary for them or as a challenge for them when they actually become vegan. So they yeah. can still have those sort of foods. So they're, they're the um, positives. So I'll leave my negatives for after. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, you can yeah. sort of jump See, in. See, as a trend, as, as a transition food, I find a lot of the mock meats are very expensive. So, from a lot of people that I've heard from, they're like, "Oh, that costs like ten dollars for a pack of meat," yeah. and just I can eat that. And yeah. so, as a transition, and as a lot of people do say, "Oh, being vegan is too expensive." Yeah, and that's a privilege. Exactly, and and the tastes of a lot of the mock meats have become a lot better. So that's because we're now adding MSG and a lot of chemicals in there. Um, cytotoxins that make us addicted to those. So, so again, they're getting better, but the companies that profit are getting bigger because they're filled with other stuff. Mm -hmm. so, yes, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the people that did put up their hand, which was James and Billy, do you maintain that position for the long term? That we should be supporting the eating of mock meats and um, my, my position is I have no position. But it's not yeah. right for me to tell other people what's right for them. Mm -hmm. uh, the only, uh, I guess, um, exception to that would be the person I'm a living being. So, my opinion on this, and just so you know, whatever we say up here, this is no, by no means right for, for everybody. These are just our opinions. But if it's not hurting another living being, then I really don't care. We could sit here and just pontificate about, okay, they're not healthy, but they're getting better. They are great for people who feel like they're missing out on the nostalgia of having a burger, and they want to just feel included and just maybe have that treat. Like, there's pros and cons, and we can flesh them all out tonight. But my opinion is I have no opinion. I, I, there are sometimes things for me, I don't judge anyone for having them. I think they've got a place in the market. I don't really, yeah, I think that's great. When you when you said, are they coming out? Am I going to get my hands on them straight away? No, but if I come across them, <laughs> will I eat them? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. and will I, will I care if anyone else eats them? Not really. You know, great. Like, that's that's the, the marketplace. Like, what inspired me to start Prana was that I was sick of the guys that drink whey protein having the best of what was out there. They had all the cool flavors, they had all the cool stuff. Like, what about us? You know, I want to have some fun with what I have. I just want to have, you know, not necessarily rice and beans all the time, but that's pretty much what I eat anyway. But just to have that other option is cool. But I'm not going to judge anyone, and my opinion is just, it's only right for me. But the moment it hurts something, someone else, as in another living being, that's where I get my back. Yeah. You know, thing. So, that's where you lay it down. I reckon that, you know, you just said like, you don't care if anyone eats it or not. Like, I am so stoked if I see someone eating it that would usually have eaten a beef burger or, you know, some. I'm yeah. stoked, I'm like, yeah, how good are they? And yeah, that actually really excites me. Um, I know that they're not the healthiest thing, but I actually don't really care that much when you compare that to what's happening to animals every single day. I would recommend it to any single person that would try it. Um, because I just think, yeah, like it's, there's a lot of salt, there's, you know, cytotoxins and whatever's in them. Um, but if people want to eat meat and cheese and milk and eggs, that's at, at least as bad, surely, as the vegan meats and that. I'd rather, it's so, it's, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, I think it's still a healthier option than what they would have been anyway. But obviously just so much better for the animals. And so I would definitely promote, you know, I always promote, I'm like, try this, it's so good, you won't even know the difference. And I love being able to say, when you go to the supermarket, this is all you have to do. You just go like that. You want those sausages, just get those sausages. Like, it's basically that easy. I love saying that to people. You can still have sausages, you can still have burgers, you can still have whatever. You know, all of these, all of your favorite meats and mints and who cares, all that. Um, I love being able to tell people. And I see like on vegan groups and that, people getting, 
you know, someone posts their vegan meat, I just had this burger and I'm like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and then all the vegans just lay it down, like, this isn't healthy, what are you doing? And I was like, veganism isn't about your health, mate, it's about non-violence towards animals. So leave the vegans who want to eat the vegan meats alone, they're just trying to eat food, mate. Like, it's not a health group here. Um, and I think, you know, is it a transition food? It can be a transition food because when you become vegan, you learn that there's literally millions of recipes and you don't. You can enjoy a meal without having a real animal cut up and put in there or something that resembles that. I didn't know that before. I thought I would only enjoy meals if they had meat or they had cheese or you know something like that. Now I know otherwise. But I couldn't care less if someone wants to eat that every day for the rest of their life. I still eat it, you know. I, it wasn't that I went vegan, I had those foods, and then I just went to only plant-based foods. I, I just had them curry sausages. That was delicious. I regret nothing. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm all for them. I think they're, I think they're amazing, actually. I'm so glad that they're here because people have literally no excuse. You know, there's no excuse. You can still eat your favorite foods, like why not? And yeah, I, I'm a massive supporter of them. And yeah. I took James to Easy House today for you. I'm trying to quite impressed with that. Yeah. 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 What, what did we eat that was vegan meat, but did we eat anything? Oh, there was like... that chicken one you liked? Oh, I did like that one. <laughs> it was vegan chicken. Uh, it was, yeah, it was the uh, steamed... What are they called? It's dumplings. Like, yeah, steamed, steamed dumplings. dumplings. Chicken. Chicken. And um, bok choy. Yeah, like, and I was chewing, I'm like, yeah, this is good, you know? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, maybe we'll follow the, the health train a little bit more. So, could people still be fit and healthy? I know, Billy, you've defined in some of your talks that there's a difference between being fit and being healthy. Um, if people maintain their habits of making something and switching to mock meats. Um, what's your opinion on that, Um, it, it's my profession. Um, <laughs> it depending, because there are mock meats like satan, which are really, um, uh, uh, healthy for us, really. Um, especially if you use principles that have been used, um, historically in those ancient cultures. So, so I think that you can have mock meats that are, are, are really, really good, um, if they don't have all the additives. Um, for servings. Um, soy protein isolate is, is something that I'm really quite against and um, so uh, mainly because of the manufacture of it and so a lot of a lot of them again are made on this. They're, they're not very, they've got a high source of protein but they're not very nutrient dense because they're actually um, can be um, chemically washed and there's not so many processes. So, so really again it depends. Um, if, if you're buying something off the shelf in a packet, a packet um, if the rest of your diet is quite uh, full of plants and fruits and everything, and there's a good balance there, I don't see why a small little bit of a mock meat is going to hurt, um, especially if you're making it yourself too. So, um, but if we are relying on um, big business where we're buying packaging and doing it that way, um, for the record, I do eat mock meats every now and then maybe once a week, once a month, um, very rare, um, and I feel a bit of crap after it, so I kind of know that um, feeling 150% um, all the time, how good I feel on a whole food plant-based diet, that eating these sort of things may weigh me down a little bit. My my younger son's just moved back in, and he he's uh, been raised as a meat eater, and he's been eating his father since I've been vegan. So he comes in and he says, um, Oh, so don't eat in this house, you know. And I said, it's food, there's pasta, there's that. And so today, uh, yesterday actually, I had to buy some plate sausages and um, falafels. He thinks they're burgers, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> so, you know, he yeah, thinks they're like meatballs. So it's, um, so I'm now having to trick an 18 year old to, um, that this is meat. And yeah. I didn't say this is plate sausage, I was like, this is a chicken sausage, you know. Yeah, I have to. So, so for, for me, for the first time in almost five years, I now have to go down the fake train. So I do see 
see the positives in the fake things, but of course I then chose one that didn't have the MSG in it and didn't have all of those. So, so that's where education comes in the beginning. And, um, and what I like to do with my clients, I, I have so many vegans that do my online programs and their diets are shocking. They come to me because they're overweight, they're sick, um, disease, and, um, and all the rest of it. So when I, I have a strict no fake meat policy um, on my plans, and um, they do get some love meals, and they're more than happy to have that on those. Um, they're like a cheat meal in my program. And so that's not going to do any harm for them. But if we, if we are relying on it like we do with meats these days where it's breakfast, lunch and dinner, then that's where the sodium goes up in our bodies and um, the fats, the high fats um, and additives and you know, a lot of the stuff that's in there give us headaches and all sorts of problems. So, um, so again, it's um, something that I um, would support but not promote. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, what about the way that the soy protein isolate is manufactured? This one? So when they get the soybeans, they defat it. And so by doing that, they have to run it through, I think, ethanol and a few other chemicals. Oh, yeah. So, so by doing that, um, and 90% of soy is GMO. So while we might not be eating an animal, we're ruining our environment. So, so for me, again, most of, most of those foods get given to animals anyway. So if we stop eating animals, and that's, that's fine. We, we, we're getting probably less than the GMO of soy, but some of that does end up in our food source as well. So, so you've got then all the pesticides and that to deal with as well. So, and by, pros, pro, um, by consuming soy protein isolate, it, it, it is it's almost it's colourless, odourless, flavourless, so then they have to, if you think about it, they have to add all that. So when you're eating one of these amazing sausages, what gives it its flavour? And so that's the natural yeast extract, which is really on the um, and flavours and colourings and all that sort of stuff. So in fact, the, the term fake meat is exactly what it is, it's fake. Yeah. So is it nutritional, nutritionist, uh, nutritious for us? Maybe if they put in some, um, Bones? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, it's, it's okay if it's once every now and then, you know. Um, I love Easy House. And, um, and I'm sure some of their methods are based on, um, I think they're Hinduism. Yeah, so I'm sure that their practices would come back to more their culture. So they would do a lot of it themselves in-house. Because to buy that sort of stuff is very expensive. So, um, so again, I like to eat there because one is clean, and hopefully they they bring some of that um, into this. So it's probably more of a healthier um, yeah. version of the food. Do you have anything to add to that? Oh, I mean that's that's covered a lot of it. Yeah. They're not with the, <laughs> the yeah. Yeah, with the evolution of these new ones that they're chasing, and I've, I've delved into it a little bit, um, but they're not chasing health with them, they're chasing texture, um, they're trying to make these analogues as close to the real yeah. thing as possible, so they're, mm. they're engineering them to not be healthy, so that's, so the answer is no, if it, foods looks like what it, it was meant to when it came out of the ground, then it's going to be healthy every day of the week, but, so I don't think they're yet doing that, but I like the idea of um, like some of these places using like, Jackfruit for cool water. So they're using whole foods to create a, an experience that people might be getting a sensation of a texture or, or a taste. Because um, yeah. a lot of meat, you know, absorbs the flavors anyway. So if you can find ways you can use whole foods, yeah, I, I don't think they're healthy at all. In fact, if you go to a town run or, or whatever, if you see people that are there a lot, they don't look healthy. And you know, they could be vegan, or they might not be. They just go there because they think it's a better option to eat those foods. But no, I don't think they're. The, even the, the next round of them, so the, um, the egg one that's coming out. Yes, I just got tagged in that one. Yeah, and... Um, what, like, what is that? <laughs> there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of Silicon Valley money yeah. flying into food engineering now. Yeah, and yeah so, a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a very uh, positive um, yeah. step, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely not against that, yeah. so... It's good, but it's not. But it's never going to be healthy. Yeah. 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 And wait, can I ask a better question? Um, would it be healthier? Let's like, say eating maybe six days a week. Yeah, it would be better. Well, you don't have cholesterol. You may not have acidity. 
um, you probably don't have the antibiotics, you don't have um, the stress, the cortisol. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 absolutely, it ticks. It, so it'll, yeah, like for like, if they taste the same, but once, once you're plant based and once you're, you know, um, from an animal, yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll still be healthier. But then again, it's not tested. Like we know that meat's not healthy now after you're conducting a social experiment for for a long time. Mm. And we can see that high meat and dairy causes these health issues. Maybe we'll be eating our words. Maybe we'll turn around. If, if people ate mock meats three or four times a day, mm. maybe in a hundred years ago, wow, that didn't work. Yeah. Like, there's, a, there's all these other problems that, that occurred for that, you know, the, the sodium or the, um, yeah, well, the some of the fillers. And so we don't we don't know that either. The gluten, for example. I mean, who would have thought? You know, you can't breads now. You know, a, a no go for many people. You know, so who knows where that, yep. that goes, you know? Peanuts, people kind of have nut meat now because of the peanut allergy thing. Mm. So maybe we'll, we'll start a new wave of allergens mm -hmm. and problems, I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people that are allergic to soy. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a very high allergen, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So um, we touched on like the <coughs> greenhouse and like with the full jackfruit and stuff. So basically, like, whilst the biochemists are getting closer and closer to like the real thing, um, I've noticed a lot of whole food and even raw chefs getting a lot closer to replicating tastes and, and also textures as well. So, really? Do you think? Yeah. Close to all casing. Yeah, like that. Not so much the texture and the taste together, but they have been generally like um, at our wedding we had. Uh, authentic from Tweed, they did a uh, faux uh, smoked salmon, mm -hmm. which was all raw. Um, Greenhouse does the pork jackfruit enchilada, and there's a lot of other places that are making it from whole foods. And so, is it so like this kind of food removes the issue around it being super processed? That's the holy grail. If they can yeah. use whole foods and create these solutions, yeah. but they're not going down there on, on mass scale, they're not yeah. doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the but the operators here, the mum and dad operators of the little restaurant, like you mentioned, that they are probably doing that yeah. still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and these guys are single operators, but yeah. on a commercial scale, it, probably not that's not the business objective. Yeah, so like the question is, should we actually be eating something that resembles like what has typically come from a dead animal, maybe James or Hang on, wait, stop filming. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> 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 Tracy, what are your thoughts on the long term effect of like high soy consumption, like lots of bulk meat? In 10 years, is the world going to go to anti vegan because we're all going to get soy cancer?
it all links back to being funded by the dairy industry or people that make money from the dairy industry. So I, know, I, I definitely um, acknowledge the fact that people do have soy allergies and that's going to be a bit of an issue. But then, you know, there's tempeh that's made from fava beans or other mm -hmm. things as well. So there's, there's whole food alternatives that I think that are more beneficial to you. And, and, and it's the quantity. I always get asked how much soy I eat or how much um, people on their meal plan to get. And I have very small amounts. I don't have a whole lot of um, um, tofu, you know, and um, I'll cut it up and have it in small pieces. So, um, so again, it's a, a quantity thing as well. So, because if you have too much of that, then you miss vitamin nutrients from the food groups. So. Mm. It would be a, a, a mock meat discussion without soy argument becoming so prevalent. So yes, like right. every post you do on Facebook about, you know, like vegan food or something, that if it's got a big thread on it, it just goes straight to soy and <laughs> off it goes. So here we are. <laughs> so funny. And soy is like a phytoestrogen as well. So if you have low, um, um, if you've got low, what did you say before? Estrogen, yeah, if you've got low, you're biting it and, and the opposite as well. So it's beneficial and like the China study, for example, is a really good study on veganism and, and soy in, um, diets and there's a lot of especially Asian communities and Buddhists and all monks that have have like long-term studies or even um, Seventh-day Adventists. Like there's lots of long-term studies of people who have been following those diets for 30 plus years. Yeah, but the introduction to mock meats is only really burning the world's growing in the years. Well, yeah, culturally, mock meats have been going for centuries. Um, I, ha I actually posted this on a thread of mine on Instagram and it got me researching what one of my followers had wrote that yeah, they so have, yeah, that, that they've actually been, um, that um, back in the, back anciently, they used to um, say if you uh, practice Buddhism, that when they were dining uh, leaders from other religions, that's when they started doing mock meats because they would want these people to feel welcomed in their castles and temples. And so they would get their chefs to replicate um, duck and meats that they would eat and almost trick them. But you know, there was no issue because they didn't feel like what they ate. So, but again, and, and, and so that's where I come in and say if they're done on the way that they used to be done, then they're probably a really healthy thing because they come straight from the plants, not from a lab. So, so that's where, again, we can make our own, a lot of my clients will make their own satan, and um, it's a lot better, you know, oh, it's really tough to right? Satan. Is it satan? Um, we can not buy it here, so mm -hmm. America you can buy it in a lot of places. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, um, I, I've tried it a few times, it's a bit like sausage meat to me, which I never just like sausages anyway, but again, it absorbs all the flavours, so whatever you're making, it's quite filling, high protein, yeah, so it's um, no additives. And definitely from the, what you're saying about the temples and that, the Seventh day Adventists started creating it, yeah, like Sanitarium, for example, and the, is it Pomona or somewhere out there, that temple, that Buddhist temple, they started making oh, fake meat. Yeah, yeah. And the Toowoomba, there's a to somewhere out at Toowoomba, it's a Buddhist um, temple that they started making mock meats as well. So they've been around for quite a while. It's just, I think the mainstream has mm -hmm. caught on to it now because, you know, fuel's a bit cheaper and it's easy to get stuff from the States where most of it is um, created. So we're seeing a lot more of it now. And you know, there's money to be made, so everyone was carrying on about being as much money. I've got another question and then we'll go to the audience. Um, assuming someone shares mock meat meals without a vegan hashtag on Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever else is like this craze, <laughs> do you think this will have a negative effect and encourage people to go out and buy animal meat if they're like sharing like their burgers or their sausages and stuff like that? No. Cool. <laughs> Why? Because they wouldn't think it's vegan, or they wouldn't know it's vegan. So what, how's that promoting them? Like, if someone, if if someone, there's like a closet vegan. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like a burger tonight, and then they go buy a burger. You know, they don't know if 
big a burger. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. That's why, like, even though I'm vegan and everyone knows it, <laughs> I always like, oh, look at my vegan burger. Look at my vegan cheese on my burger. Right? And that's my point. You need to say vegan. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were like, no, hold on a second, I haven't thought this through. <laughs> If they don't put a hashtag, did it really happen? Can I just um, talk about the um, issues that I have with oh, mock me? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll just. Is there anybody that has a question at all? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not vegan just, you know, to look hot in a bikini or something. Like, I care about animals as much as I care about the environment, as much as I care about, you know, um, um, social justice issues and human rights and feminism. So to me, all of those things intersect and I think that they're all linked. And so um, I find that, like, what we were talking about before, um, Chris, you mentioned a bit about the environmental impacts. Like, the energy to produce a lot of these mock meats is very, very similar, if not the same, as the energy that is used to um, produce animals and to get animals to the table. And um, the, pro the actual process of the processing, the meats as well, isn't very good. And the packaging, the majority of things is in plastic that's got cardboard on it, like that's a lot of packaging. And think about all the food miles that are attached to these things too. The majority of these things come from the US or the UK. That's a hell of a long way for things to travel, just for us to have something quite easily. And um, so they're the biggest sort of issues with that. And in regards to health, like uh, um, if, if it's non-GMO related, which I think a lot of the vegan sort of things are nowadays, but you have to check if it, it actually has that on it. And there's a lot of fillers, like we were saying before, like wheat, corn, salt, all those things, MSG. And um, I think what sort of what you were heading to before with that question, that um, like a lot of I'm friends with a lot of non-vegans, and they just do not understand why vegans would want mock meat. Like you, the whole idea of being vegan is not to have meat, isn't it? Like what's what's wrong with you? And and um, and I think they're onto something. Because the whole idea of veganism as a lifestyle, not just a diet, is saying we don't need to be relying on animals <coughs> as a product, as um, for our clothing, for what we eat, for like to attend events and have fun. We don't need all these things to happen. So it's sort of like encouraging or using mock meat. I think it's like inviting the comparison that these things are okay and it implies that we're missing out on something as vegans. Yeah. So to me, that's the biggest issue. So as much as I see all these really positive aspects about it, then though that for me, because coming from not just a plant-based or vegan as a food or vegan as a diet, I see it as a lifestyle and something that intersects with all these other things. So we need to be going forward and saying, hey, we're vegan, we don't need all these animal products. And it's, and it's another thing because like, you know, we wear, like I just got this new fake leather jacket at the op shop and I've got fake leather things and I feel like a bit weird when I wear them. Sometimes like I'm like, because I know like it, you know, I like it or something, but I'm like, well, people might be thinking that it's leather when I'm walking around as a vegan advertisement. And they go, oh, well, at least you tell she wears, she wears leather, so that's okay. And is that okay? I'm, I'm not sure. Like, I'm sort of, like, struggling with that a bit. And um, and also what we were talking before, um, it's a really big issue that um, a lot of people can't afford to eat all these things. Like, it brings up issues of privilege and, in particular, um, where the <coughs> urban environments where we live, where we are now at the moment, have so many vegan alternatives, so many health food stores, but so many people don't have those things. And to to be able to say yeah, you need mock meat to to be to have a vegan diet or that it's sort of acceptable, so many people cannot afford those things or 
I don't think we should be encouraging people to be buying packaged and produced things that are out of the majority of people's budget and range. And I think or, it needs to be more accessible and availability. Yeah. Yes, not everyone can afford to go to Whole Foods, Whole Foods or Mrs. Flannery's, and not everyone can afford to get you know um, delivery of vegan products from the local vegan store. So. Um, I think, you know, it comes down to me, like what you said about not hurting animals, and I think you said, James, too, like you don't care, but we've also got to think about other people, and, you know, humans are animals too, so how does it affect the environment and people that have to live in those environments? How does it affect people that are working in these areas? How does it affect, you know, packaging food miles and all these other things, people that can't afford it? So to me, they're all inter interlinked and they all matter just as much. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I've always changed my mind now. <laughs> whole foods and meals that everyone had access to that pretty much everyone can afford and well, that's that's the first question I get when people want to buy my ebook or do my program. Mm -hmm. Am I going to be able to get it into me? Am I going yeah, to yeah, yeah, totally. And so I always say to them if it grows out of the ground you can yeah. get it. Yeah. So I said that's all whole foods. Mm -hmm. So there aren't any restrictions. I don't ask for any fancy um, ingredients like yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah. But can I ask a question? Um, you said it's, it's equally as bad as the environment. Is it? Yeah. How can it be so bad? Well, the, like the toxins, the processes, um, things like that. It's all, yeah. And if well, if you think about what what's involved, it's like is soy in, in particular yeah. is a massive, <coughs> say, water. Like it uses a lot of water in yeah. space. So the soy that's created for animals to consume then you know, it becomes meat. If you take that soy and make something else with it, that's also processed. Like I'm not talking about the whole soybean. Yeah. So similar sort of things. Plus all like the processes that get involved, the production line, all that energy. That's a lot. I'm not yes. I can't I'm just scale. Scale. So, so yeah. you know, so they're not you know, the, the market decides what something's worth and, and a company won't put something out, you know, that's inefficient and doesn't have enough margin. So uh, they've got to make their money. So if they might have big OPS, might be big production costs. That still doesn't mean it's not, you know, uh, a viable business in the sense that, um, you know, they've got to quantify all those costs in dollar terms. So... Um, I was thinking from the environmental perspective. Yeah. That was my point. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I see where you're going. Where did you get that? Yeah. I've seen like a lot in comparison to what like we know that like a burger's from the cow series is like 7,000 litres of water or something. How can one veggie patty be the same? Just have a look at, um, I think I looked at, this was a while ago I saw that, but um, like the production of soy products. So I'm not sure now with all the bigger ones like Gardein and stuff for example. Um, but then if they're bigger facilities, maybe it, maybe it's worse. And a lot of made with other products now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they've got this protein, yeah. protein yeah. and this sort of thing, as opposed to soy. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's much better for the environment. And, and, and then it's a question. So and the wheat too, like the fillers, like the yeah. wheat, the corn, that would also yeah. add to it. It's, yeah. it's part of the pitch, you know. These, these businesses are pitched so that they are environmentally better. So I'm, I'm sort of to see the stats because certainly beyond me um, you know that's that's a big part of you know they talk about the pros of it you know they do they're not because they can't talk about health they're not saying this is yeah. they're saying okay it's mildly better than the yeah, 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 yeah. reality but they're not pushing that they're saying better for the environment um, you know better for your wallet like they're bringing the price down um, with economies of scale so yeah I'm well that for the environmental aspects Beyond meat, for example, that would be related to the animals and the space that they're taking up. So, from environment, like in the states, for example, just you know, going like seeing the massive amounts of animal areas that are all just yeah. going to be killed. So, from an environmental perspective, that would be because it's that is, issue. Because I'm, I'm, I'm with everybody as far as like it's you know, people that consume animals and all those sort of things, but if all the vegans 
all of a sudden we started eating all these um, fake meats and we become unhealthy, we still stick with the same thing that we uh, vegans have had for years, which is probably why I never even thought about going vegan, because people were really sick and hippie and frail and all those. That, that, that was what I thought a vegan was as well before I went. So, so I would hate to see us get uh, having these mock meats for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and become sick with other type of disease, whether they were GMO or not, or, or yeah. whatever. Um, it will become about the back pockets of companies because we are going. This is this is our evolution. We are all going to end up being vegan. I think. I don't know if I've seen in my lifetime, but it's going to go that way. And um, and I would like to see human kind be healthier, you know, out, rather than more sick, which is where we are now. So. So my whole thing is, is, is about inspiring people to change, you know, and if it means having these transition uh, foods, um, some can go there, you know, and be real happy. So, so if that works, and then you, uh, and then we quit when we're there, but... Um, Small steps. So I just have a question about, you were saying about the same environment. Environmental impact. So, for example, in Kasparisi, where they have little cartoon fields and they say, if you're leaving, you only need this much mm. in the field. So, that's only if you're a whole food vegan. If you're a mock meat vegan, you're as bad as the, you need the 18 fields. Is that, is that no, kind of what I'm hearing you yeah. saying? No, I mean in the processing of it mostly. So, I'll have to put on, send you the links. I'll go and find that and send the links. I actually spend a little bit on it, um, with, especially with Impossible Foods, like both um, on Young Meat and Impossible Foods, they're both soy derived, but with Impossible Foods, their um, like key ingredient is like a heme compound, which they extract from, they originally got it from soy, but now they're getting it from a GMO yeast, mm -hmm. okay. and apparently it's, um, a lot of fungus. and apparently it's really, um, like that heme compound is what it makes the um like it basically replicates like the the blood and stuff mm. so it flows like the root right. like blood out oh, of yeah, so. the root of the vegetable um or they get it from soy um or if they're getting it at the moment at the scale that they're at um, from GMO yeast training get from clovers or something as well um but apparently yeah it's really intensive so they they haven't been able to get the scale up yet, so that's why it's not in supermarkets, they're only doing it in select stores. I mean, I'm not stores, uh, restaurants. I don't think most of us could probably afford anyway to eat more food spread solution, mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone, but they're pretty really expensive. I don't buy them, I don't know if go to Easy House every now and then. So I think like 10 But if it was cheaper and more accessible. That's probably mm -hmm. correct. I, I think, think with that point, 100%. You know? So. I think that, like if once it, once prices drop and it's more accessible, then we can actually can compare it to yeah. meat eating. Because now I think it's just quite abstract. Mm -hmm. And um, when yeah, when you sort of can put it like in like right next to each other, saying meat. I don't even know how much meat is to be honest, but whatever price that is, and this is like five times more or something. Like when they're on the same level, which is another issue, um, the government subsidising all the animal products and that. So when that happens, I think we'll get some really good things happening. When the food's affordable for the majority of the public, that's when. Honestly, if I, I think if the meats were really that unhealthy, um, they would definitely put those studies out there. Like if they were really, yeah. really bad for yeah. you, it'd be like, you know, we're going to do this. Like that. That'd be okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's better than what's out there. So maybe they're staying a bit more expensive than we only consume every now and then. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I, I'm pro protein, and um, but that's not at the expense of not being also pro the other macronutrients. I, I also have fats in my diet. I also have carbohydrates. So even though I have more protein than most people in the room, except that guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, it's I remember. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I still add, I still advocate high protein, but probably just it's still the same sort of ratio as probably someone like Chrissy. I think still more than half of your calories should come from carbs. Um, I still and then and the other half maybe split between you know in terms of calories between fats and protein. So um, you know I haven't heard that though with what you're saying about protein doing that. Most protein um, that's, that 
that's not used by the body broken down into amino acids is simply eliminated. Um, you know, there's no real such thing as a protein shortage, nor in the body, I agree with that, but nor is there much that I've seen about protein um, overconsumption as it relates to plant protein. Certainly high protein meat and dairy, absolutely, uh, it undoubtedly is bad for you. So, but whether high plant protein consumption does that, I don't know, maybe we'll find out. And I certainly, even though I have a, a company that does protein powder, I still don't say you've got to have protein every meal and you've got to have, have it, you know, sky high. It depends what you do with your body. You know, guys like myself, Jeff and James, who, who do training, we need more protein. Our body needs it to, to recover. We're not going to, it's not going to turn against us. And I've never heard that description of, of protein doing that uh, before. So you use trampoline to clear food. Yeah. So, so I would do CrossFit, weights, surfing, martial arts, yoga. So I do movement, yeah. similar to your movement on a trampoline. <laughs> but I've, I've, I'm, I'm, you know, one day I'll, that'll be more, be my choice as well. You know, um, when I when I warm my body out with all these other things. But movement um, creates, you, you know, your body systems to flush, detox your lymphatic system to get rid of these waste products out, out of your blood. I mean, alkalizing your blood and actually having free space between the cells to get rid of the, you know, the lactic acid, the yeast, all that stuff out of your, your body, that comes from having certain nutrients in, in your body that, um, so you, it, can, it can actually do what it's meant to do, and that's eliminate waste, including okay. protein. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So whole food, fruits and vegetables, leafy greens, probably the best. So leafy greens, I mean, if you look at anyone who's um, and, and this is not my opinion, I, I haven't been down that path, but I've worked with people that, that are blood microbiologists that work with very sick people to reverse illness. And um, in the States, I was just at the last plant-based health conference in Anaheim, and um, there was cases of doctors there that would put patients on a program of whole foods, um, but predominantly greens, steamed greens, every meal, they were having six times a day steamed greens. Now, literally watching this case by case, after about 30 days, their blood's, their body's able to do what it's meant to do. Your body's not meant to hold waste. Tumors are a result of blockages in your body. So when your body's running well and it's efficient, it's got nutrients, chlorophyll, antioxidants, vitamins, micronutrients. It's, that's in your body. Your body will efficiently start using those to break down that waste product and eliminate it. So that's what I would have. So do they prefer steam greens to like green smoothie type stuff? Is yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, steam, uh, yeah, steam, steam greens were the king. Yeah, green smoothies are good. I mean, anyway, you can have greens if it's convenient for you. Cool, that works. But um, the act of chewing, the saliva, helping break that down, uh, there's, a, there's a, a connection there physiologically with the mind as well when you're having something, you're just drinking it down. Uh, plus, if you're drinking it, it's a lot of calories, your body may you know, get rid of that. But if you have to choose something, particularly green with the fibre that they've got, they're going to, that digestive process is slowing down, your body has to break it down. There's more chance of those nutrients you know, going through your, your, through your stomach and into your intestine and being broken down properly and for your body to use, rather than just you know, putting it through in mass quantities. So that, that was the key, and it's not my um, you know, advice or, or findings, but I definitely took it on board and, you know, steam greens are just the go-to in so meals. Steam greens. Yeah, and, and it was spinach, watercress, and um, okay. yeah, well, yeah, no, okay, it's okay. Be collards? Yeah, collards, yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah, well, I was trying to think of the third one. Uh, beet greens are good too, <coughs> but watercress and, um, and, yeah, and collards, they were the, they were the and English spinach was, mm -hmm. they were the best. Do we have collards? So I'm trying to work out when you say about you know how much you should or shouldn't eat. Do you make them yourself? No. See that's the thing. Yeah. So. Is that still too much? No, I think I think that's that's fine. Because I'm still doing it once a day. I'd say yes. Yes, yes, yes. 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 It depends what, what you're eating. Like a bit. I mean, if you check the back of the packaging and it's got a whole lot of numbers, 
then you're going, okay, when I have my headache tomorrow, that's going to be why. Yeah. So we do things like that. So, but if, 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 if it's just a meatball as far as the whole spaghetti and that was the only talk that you had that day, I, I, I don't think that being a health coach uh, even, that would be too much. My clients wouldn't have it. But yeah, so, but that's, mm -hmm. that's perfect. So, yeah, you know, it's, I don't think that's that. Wait, you disagree? Because a lot of people are having it every day. I mean, every, every meal. Yeah. Right. Well, I look at my clients' diaries. And, oh, really? Um, every meal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah some of them do. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm talking any, any mock meats or um, yeah, processed foods yeah. of, of mm -hmm. that are vegan. Um, yeah, so there's a lot, especially a lot of my clients aren't from Australia, they're from America. Mm. And you'd be amazed at the lot of stuff they have over there. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so there's a lot. What were you going to say about? Yeah, I think it's too much. Mm. Uh, that's, that's my opinion, that's right, that would be right for me. I wouldn't have it every day for the reasons that we've talked about, yes. the health yes. reasons. I, I, yes. I just wouldn't have it every day. For even some psychological like reasons, like I don't want to rely on foods mm -hmm. that replicate it. So, you know, the good thing that all the fries isn't on the Gold Coast, it's a safe thing for myself, you know? Um, and, and, and it depends what, 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 your, yeah. what your priority is, your goal. If it's, yeah. if it's something quick and convenient, yeah. um, then it's sure, you know, um, throw them in. But if, if you're looking at more of becoming healthier and um, well, I think the other that's, is, that's starting to become a consideration for me. When I went yes. vegan, it was totally the animals. If someone had turned around and said, this is going to take 10 years of your life, I would have gone fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, exactly. for me, it was never about the health. It was always about the animals. But, you know, I'm down the track a little bit now, and I'm a little bit like, okay, you know, this is... You're a walking example of, to your friends yeah. that aren't yet vegan. So if you can be the healthiest, fittest, happiest mm -hmm. vegan that you can be, yeah. Yeah. then you're, they are going to judge you. Yes. They're going to go, will it work for me? They're going to eye you up and down. They're going to look and go, how's it going for her? Mm -hmm. And so if these foods detract from your health, then you're not doing your best as an advocate, perhaps, um, and your role is, as someone you know, in your peer group to look at as a great example of what the lifestyle can do. So you, know, you owe it to the people around you but there's to other influence. Side. To be healthy, but there's so, other side too about making it convenient for them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's right. But you know, if you're, if you're nailing it, I mean, um, and you're you know, yeah, and you've been vegan for a while now, so you kind of know how to do it. You know, yeah. at first we can use those as a transition yeah. food. That's kind of so. Like it's not saying they don't have to do it. They don't have to eat these foods. But no. but for you, if you can show them, that, you know, that that's the ideal. That's the holy grail. The whole food. You know, versions of these, mm -hmm. eating a whole food plant-based diet for your health, for the environment, and you know, and, and the, um, you know, setting an example because you'll look super healthy. Because I believe as, as a vegan, like this year, fifty percent of my clients have been on vegan. Mm -hmm. Today, I thought I was just going to be an online coach to vegans, mm -hmm. you know, um, and so by in, by being uh, you know inspiring people with what what you can achieve and, and, and do and, and feel like, I think that's going to save more animals at the end of the day. What were the other things you ate? You said the fake meatballs, what else? Um, I really, I like the Veggie Delight chicken strips, mm -hmm. but a packet of that will last me six weeks. Yeah, that's right. See, maybe, so, because I'll have, yeah. because for me, I always don't lynch meat. I love meat. Mm. Like yeah. I loved it. And I know a lot of people. I never <laughs> saw <laughs> 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 called you a have just that but it's changing beliefs and that can take time because you've got your conscious and your subconscious mind and we have bombarded marketing yeah. through our whole lives our families you know the manliness of this or the you know whatever and you have to just sort of un reverse engineer it yes yeah. and that's what helps you my answer is what was you asked me that if that was right for me was, that's my opinion but yes. it's not right for, my opinion is not right for everyone but, so that's, but i think it's yeah. what i need to hear now because i am now starting to be like Okay, now I'm starting to think about health. I've got the animal stuff down pat. So, yeah, like if, they're, if they're your favourite things you do, like I would you know, find a recipe and make your own meatballs and put them in the freezer, have them wherever you like. Yeah, and I'd make me like to think I could. Or, <laughs> you know, um, assume that you can, and that could be a new challenge for the year.
here and maybe make some seitan or something you've got that and then just you know one day it's the mock meat that you buy the next day it's not and just do that and we'll see how that goes so i think it i know for me i use mock meat as a transitional food but because when I became vegan, I became so much more conscious about everything. That's when I started to question, well, what's in this product? Because I never really used to think about what was my say before. Um, and when I started to question that, then I sort of think, well, so we have to learn about the products. Yeah, you have to learn about the money and the labels and where stuff comes from. And yeah, and then you start to question like, the environment and the fact and we're here, we're here to learn, always learn. As long as you're open to learning about stuff, which you are, break your step, Maybe there are some about I was only thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Um, you know, like we keep calling it mock meat, mock meat, and I think a better way to describe it would be vegan meat. You know, because if you're calling it vegan meat, first of all, you're using the word vegan and out there, it's definitely vegan. But also calling it mock meat, it's like, you know, it's not real, it's not the real thing. You know, it's kind of negative, I reckon. And Do you want to call investment? Tonight, just now. It's called vegan meat. I, I, I like that better too. Yeah, I think that is better. One of my friends was saying, when I was telling him about this talk, he said, I don't understand why we still say chicken meat or like ch fake chicken or fake beef or something. So why don't we just call it unicorn or something like this? <laughs> 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 and I'm like, what do you mean? People want to eat chicken, so that's what brought me to, you know. So it's just like, I think the terms are wrong. I think we shouldn't be using chicken, beef, or something. No, it should be like medium dark, meat, meat, white. I don't know, I haven't got that far.